<laughs> Good evening, folks. This is your short take. That is Dave. Um, so, as you know, I posted a video about Zoe Zephyr this morning, and we're going to continue on talking about transgender issues because it is the topic of our time in these times that we live in. Um, and uh, this is relevant to the press coverage of transgender issues, which we will start tonight and continue next week. So here's Dave. So this week we're going to focus on the New York Times. Next week we're going to focus on the Wall Street Journal. But I want to talk to everyone who is reading about this, whether you are the parent of a child who's coming out as as gay or transgender, or if you are having those feelings yourself, or if you just want to become informed about the issue so you can help people, sort of like myself. I'm I'm a straight man who wants to who wants to know how he can help. Believe it or not, there's some of us out there. Uh, what I see as one of the problems is that newspapers and news outlets, one of their jobs is to inform, but the other thing that they have to worry about is making money and making revenue. And that makes them responsive to things that are popular at the time. Right now, one of the things that is very uh, buzzworthy, I guess you would say, is this whole idea of the anti-woke movement. And part of it has to do with our orange menace friend, Donald J. Trump, who, after being indicted, his his popularity has soared. So we have news outlets who are seeing this, and I have a feeling that they are becoming a little clouded in their judgment. It is our jobs and our duty as readers and as activists to uncloud their judgment. I understand and Deb understands that News outlets, part of their job is to show, quote unquote, both sides. To us, there is no side to fascism and there is no side to the right wing movement. However, the New York Times, the Washington Post, the Guardian, ProPublica, every news outlet has to at least listen to what the right wing says, but they don't have to pair it and mirror it and make it seem uh, empathetic and sympathetic, which is where we feel, I feel, that the New York Times may be at it. So let me just say in response to that, that I totally agree. And you know, I brought this article up to you months ago. Months ago. Saying that I was really pissed off about it. Right. Um, and I refrained from canceling my subscription until today. Right. So I am a big believer, though, in mainstream media. You know that. I subscribe to the Post. I subscribe to the Times. I subscribe to the Boston Globe. Okay. But right now, I feel like the New York Times is shifting into Fox territory in some regards. And um, I think this whole anti-woke thing is absolutely absurd. Um, and for a newspaper to cater to something like that is dangerous. Um, I will not give my hide and dollars. You know, I'm 69 and still working. I will not give my money to New York Times any longer. They are dead. Whatever I've paid up to as of this month, it's paid. Um, I canceled it through PayPal this afternoon. We we actually both... I. I wanted to take a deep, hard look and deep, hard dive into all of this 
this isn't just about one story. This is about uh, multiple stories about, by the way, not just transgender issues, but other issues. And we'll- It's a we'll, pattern. It's, so, it's, it's a pattern. pattern. It's showing a pattern. And not only are organizations such as GLAD and the Human Rights Campaign um, protesting some of the New York Times coverage, but the New York Times own staff are protesting this, whether it be independent writers or staff writers. And it's becoming a union issue at this point. Right. So it is our job as, as researchers and also as readers and people who like to do some research and activists, it's our job to use our consumer power to tell them no, enough. Okay, Deb and I decided about a month ago to continue to subscribe for now. Now we're done. I'm done. Once we do this, we want to show you what we're talking about. And then for now, we're done until we see substantive change. And that is not cosmetic nonsense like putting up a poll or hiring one reporter or no we want to see real change and some of that has been outlined by the human rights campaign and it's not just the new york times as i said the wall street journal has fallen in into the uh same trap so yeah. and we have real issues we have politicians who are being silenced, being called insurrectionists, by the way. And we'll get in, I know Deb's already gotten into that. Zoe Zephyr is not an insurrectionist. She said that, that conservative right-wing uh, politicians in her state had, will have blood on their hands because what they're doing legislatively will cause suicide rates to potentially increase in her state and kill transgender kids. By she wasn't way, calling for violence. By the way, that law passed and GN40 signed it into law. Yep. All right. And I, I, I have to say that I did read a comment on, uh, on she, she went on YouTube. I believe she was interviewed by uh, uh, MSNBC. Yep. A comment by somebody there that um, she doesn't have the right to <laughs> chastise or to speak out against the legislature. That's what they have those debates for. That's called freedom <laughs> of speech, First Amendment <laughs> rights. They have debates in legislative bodies prior to voting on a law so that people can have their say. So really, while you're at it, shut the fuck up, okay? And I'm seeing on social media, um, so he's after and transgenders transgender activists being called a cult. You really want to see a real cult? Look at the people following DJT, yeah. okay? Just look at the GOP. That's a total just, cult. Just, Masquerading as a political party. Right. All right, gang, we'll see you on the big show.